So today we're going to talk about sound processing, which is a topic I've been trying to avoid. I didn't want to get into it because I'm not a professional. I'm not a sound engineer. Actually, I'm still learning it, but I felt like all the tutorials that are out there are done by professionals and they understand audio really well, but they can't explain it to someone like me who just wants a basic understanding enough to make my, my voice and my, the, you know, my audio, my dialogue sound really well. So I thought I would just take a crack at it and just show you something that's very simple to understand, something that you can implement right away. It's very black and white. It's not this whole gray area uh, left up for interpretation. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna break this into three series, three videos. I'm gonna go over channel EQ, compressor, and adaptive limiter. I know you can use more plugins, but these are the three basic ones I use. And I think if you start using these three, your audio is going to sound much better and you're going to be good to go. So without further ado, let's jump over to a computer and let's show you how that works. Okay. So here we are in Final Cut Pro X and you're looking at a project I recently worked on. I already did the audio processing for this video footage. So we're going to start from the beginning. So uh, actually the first thing you want to do is you want to disable the the audio track this is the audio track i'm going to disable it by hitting the v button i'm going to select this audio clip we're going to start with this one and i'm going to delete the channel eq which is the first thing we apply the compressor and the adaptive limiter so those are the three i use so if you go to the effects and you scroll down you go to all audio yeah or you can search for eq like i did here eq you apply the channel EQ to your to your footage or your to your audio if you're recording audio separately. In this case, I my audio is straight to the camera. So there it is, channel EQ. Let's bring it up. And this is what it looks like. I know it looks intimidating, but I'm gonna try to simplify it as much as possible. Oh, look at my face. Let me do another frame. It looks like I'm drunk. There it is. Okay, so let's start with using a high pass filter, which which is basically a way to cut down the frequencies that, or to cut down a frequency that our ears can't actually listen to. So if we start do, by doing that, we can also get rid of certain humming sounds and low end sounds that, you know, that, that might be distracting. But for the most part, our ears can't hear it, so we can just might as well cut it off. So uh, usually the hertz, I go to 80, anything so it's cutting everything under 80 or any anywhere from 60 to 80 so 70 even 75 is fine 74 doesn't make a huge difference and the decibel i leave it at 18 and the band at 0 0.71 it's fine so it's basically re cutting everything under 74 hertz you can also do this on the other end which is called this is called the low pass filter anything above 10,000, our ears can't actually hear. So you can take this, also drag it like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, anywhere around 10,000. And the decibel level at, I leave it at 12. And this band, you can go 71 as well, 0 0.71. Okay, so we got, you know, it, most people are, can't really listen to this, so I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but it's a good idea from everything that I've read and the tutorials I've watched, they always recommend that you do this. Okay, so the next spot or the hot spot is a 250 hertz. This is a, like I said, this is a sweet spot because this is where our voice lives right here in this area. Most of our voice lives right here. And it's also where our voice gets boxy. So if if let's say you have a bad microphone, which you don't want to have, right? You want to have the best microphone you can have. You just want to get rid of a little bit of that microphone sound or the boxy sound. Uh, so more of our natural voice comes out. So what we do is we go to 250 hertz and we take this decibel level and we just bring it slightly down. There, 2.5. You don't want to overdo it with, you know, going over three or... I mean, over four or five, because now you're you're fixing audio problems and everything starts with having good audio recorded. So if you're having to do this, I would suggest that you go back and look at how you're recording audio, because this audio processing is, is used to sweeten. I can't, I can't say that word, sweeten that audio, not to fix stuff. 
So anywhere around, anywhere from two to three, it's fine. And then this bandwidth, I actually make it a little bit narrower, somewhere around 1.10 is fine. Uh, this basically just is telling you how, how much do you, how many frequencies do you want this to affect? And you can broaden it. And so it's a, kind of affecting this area right here. Okay. So it's not just affecting the 200, 250 Hertz it's the surrounding areas as well, but not as much. And okay. So 250 Hertz, the other hot spot, or I, I don't know if you want to call it that is uh 4,000, 4,000 Hertz. So if we scroll up, we can also take this dot right here and go to 4,000. Hopefully you can see that moving there and we can boost it up. Why? Because around the, around this, uh, hurt level, is that how you say it hurts level because around this hurts level, we can bring up the pop or the energy in our voice. So if we bring it up a little bit, maybe like two decibels or 1.5, two decibels, don't overdo it. And then this bandwidth also go to maybe uh, go up to like 110, 120 is fine. And it'll uh, add that extra energy in our voice. Uh, I could play this for you and you're probably not going to see much of a difference the before and after, but you know, let's try it out. See what happens. Let me play this with equal uh, with uh, EQ on. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you that because if you're gonna be shooting YouTube videos, just... I think I deselected it. Right. Let's go to the audio again. Yeah. So that was a deselection. Let's play from the beginning again. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you that because if you're gonna be shooting YouTube videos, just know that a vintage lens. Maybe you can't tell the difference. Maybe you can. It's better when you have micro uh, the uh, I'm sorry the headphones on and you can kind of play it back and forth. It's a good idea to get into the habit of doing these things to, you know, make make your voice sound much better. So that's a basic breakdown on how to do channel EQ. You could play with uh, the other frequencies. I know that 1000 and 2000 are, are other hotspots, also 750. But I stopped doing them because uh, I just want to keep it simple and just straightforward and, and just hit the, the main hotspots, which to me are 250 and 4000. So, yeah, that's it. So that's the first step in processing your audio for your videos, or at least that's what I do. If I wasn't clear about anything or you have questions, or let's say you know of a better way of doing this, please share down below in the comment section. If you found this useful and it was easy enough to understand, please drop me a like. Also subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on tomorrow's video on how to use a compressor.